AMD is just embarrassing NVIDIA at this point with a, 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 a program, a service that NVIDIA was the one to innovate on and introduce to the world. AMD's Relive or Relive, I prefer the name Relive because live streaming and recording, is a, a challenger to NVIDIA's Shadow Play or GeForce Experience Share and is kicking NVIDIA's butt these days. I last looked at it in 2019, back when Shadowplay was the king. Shadowplay introduced the ability to not only easily record your gameplay and take screenshots and things like that, but in the Shadowplay name, it allowed you to go back in time and record moments that already happened that you weren't actively recording for. That way you didn't have to keep recording just an ongoing recording of everything that happened. You could just capture the highlights, the moments, the cool things that happened from a buffer without needing you know, to waste a lot of space, seek through clips, things that someone like myself just doesn't have the time for. It also let you take screenshots and they've added in some features, but overall, while Shadowplay was innovative and, and game-changing for so many content creators, it's something that has gone sorely underdeveloped and just kind of ignored by NVIDIA over the years. It, it, it has many long-standing bugs and quirks about it that people don't want that they've just not fixed over time, and it just hasn't gotten a whole lot of new features. When, during the RTX 2000 or 3000 series launch, they did add in the ability to record HDR with the HEVC codec, but you could only use HEVC with HDR. And then later on, they ended up adding for the RTX 4000 series launch, 8K60 recording with HEVC as well. But overall, it has gotten very few updates. It still looks pretty old, just like NVIDIA's control panel. Their control panel looks like the same as it did in Windows XP days. Shadowplay is in dire need of updates and feature fixes and things like that, and AMD is kicking their butt with this. Whenever you first start up the AMD Relive or Relive section of the AMD Adrenaline software, you may get presented with this pop-up that's a first-time launcher kind of window that shows you how to set up recording or streaming or whichever you want to optimize for, and this is pretty cool. But otherwise, if you've already launched it before, this is the new home view compared to last time I looked at it back in 2019 or whenever it was. It's pretty sweet. The home page is full of these modular windows that they can add to and ideally at some point let you customize over time. You can see here I have a driver update that released during the time of filming this video. You can connect to AMD Link to gain stream to your phone or other device. You've got lots of advertisements. You've got information about the games you've played most recently, including the average FPS, which is pretty sick. Uh, how long you played for your session and you can go in and adjust your game graphics. So we can click here on, say, Battlefield. And you can see here it says that my performance grade for the game itself, you know, given what limitation it might have and whatever, is it's optimal. I don't necessarily need to change anything. But here I could enable super resolution if I want to hurt my performance more. I could enable anti-lag, which I have on, reduces input lag. You, if you're on a laptop, you could enable Radeon Chill to limit your frame rate to save on battery power. You don't want this on a desktop. Apparently, Radeon Image Sharpening is enabled by default. I'm not sure I like that, but it's there. You can enable enhanced sync, which will help with tearing and input latency. You've got free sync options, scaling modes, iFinity, if you somehow still use that. Lots of things there. And then you can even click the button to tune game performance and actually change your... Or it can crash on me. That didn't happen during my original take of this recording, but the software has crashed a couple times. It's AMD. Software isn't always the most stable. Anyway, you can change global tuning or per game tuning for your graphics card to change how it runs. If you have specific clock, you know, overclocks or underclocks you want to run on a per game basis, which is wild. That's all the normal stuff. We're going to skip over most of the normal stuff. We're focused on the record and stream tab here at the top, which presents you with a very interesting layout. You actually get a preview of clips you've recorded before. You've got tabs for recording, live streaming, editing scenes, because this program is now a fully featured OBS alternative when it comes to building live streaming scenes, as well as viewing more of your clips. So you can set it to record just a region or full screen of your whole screen, which is what most people will want. Region would work for like window capture, but also you get to specify whether you want the active window or specific displays. This is huge. It gives you a little border to indicate which monitor so you can identify them. This is huge because one of the big shadow play bugs is that it will just randomly record your side monitor even though nothing's going on on it instead of the game you have featured. I cannot tell you the number of times I had awesome clips in games and instead of having them I just get a blank desktop view of my desktop or a blank desktop view of my vertical side monitor for no apparent reason. Obviously you have a start recording button but you can assign a hotkey to it which we'll check out in a moment. You can enable or disable your microphone from being recorded or your camera as an overlay. You can set your microphone level here. I recommend keeping it most of the way up, but you may want to tone it down just a teeny tiny bit so you don't clip just in case. You know, well, just in case. You can enable push to talk if you wish. 
you have an indicator to show when you're recording and when your mic is active. I recommend turning this on because otherwise it's very confusing. You don't know whether it's on or not. And you can enable or disable recording the desktop itself separate from your game capture hooks. If you're wanting to record tutorials like I did for part of this video, then you would enable record desktop. But otherwise I'd keep it off just to make sure you avoid the possibility of that blank desktop recording as can happen, at least with Shadowplay. I haven't gotten it with Relive so far, but better safe than sorry. Next, we can go over here to live streaming. Here, you get a preview from the specific service that you're streaming to. You can again choose your options for full screen region, monitors, microphone, camera, all of that goodness. But you also get scenes. So first, you can you can choose your service, which it supports Twitch, Facebook, Restream for multi-streaming, whatever the hell stage 10 is, Twitch, YouTube, or custom RTMPs. You can choose your specific Twitch server, and that's about it from this window, but you can also view your live chat if you want to pull this up in another monitor. Now, you do have multiple scenes that you can create and choose between. So if you go over here to the Scene Editor tab, now you can enable a lot of different stuff. By default, it's set up kind of like this with a streaming indicator, a camera, and your chat, kind of like the, the console streaming windows. I feel like they learned a lot from their PlayStation and Xbox integrations. I don't know how much the software team honestly had any involvement with them. Could be none. You can name it, you can set high keys for your individual scenes, you can make new scenes from this menu right here, you can click a plus, can delete, whatever, then you have your elements that you can choose from, uh, so you have those kinds of things, camera, blah blah blah, you can also add in other elements, so you can add browser sources, images, GIFs, and video, so you can add in your overlays, your alerts, everything, this is a fully featured, effectively OBS alternative built into the driver software for free, absolutely wild. You may notice, however, a lot of some kind of basic settings are missing because we're, we're, we're entering a, a scenario that I'm worried about, which is layered menus in that you have to go over here to advanced settings just to choose which camera and microphone it uses. That's not an advanced setting. It's just a basic setting because otherwise you're not going to get what you want because the defaults, at least in my experience, have never been accurate. Now, the advanced settings menu brings you to a whole separate sub menu with a lot of tabs here. And this more resembles the original AMD Relive that I took a look at a few years back. That's why I'm concerned because it feels like legacy menus being layered on top of each other, which is something that, say, Windows 10 and 11 kind of struggles with. So I'd hate to see that continue to get layered upon over the years. But down here at the very bottom, you can choose your microphone and your video capture device. So we have the Razer Keo Pro Ultra as our webcam. Phenomenal webcam. Have a bunch more coming to the studio. I like it so much. And then we're using the Rode XCM50 as our mic at the moment that you're hearing now. In the settings menu, though, you have lots of glorious options. So you have the normal stuff of recording desktop indicators, range and capture. But then you can choose your quality. And oh boy, do they have so many more options than NVIDIA does. First and foremost, they do have some quality presets. I'm not a fan of them, but they do low, medium, and high. By default, on my AMD 7900 XT graphics card, which is AMD's latest and greatest, well, I guess the XTX would be the greatest, it auto-selected the AV1 codec, which is a new open-source video codec. It is absurdly high quality uh, and is the way to go for the future for recording. DaVinci Resolve currently supports it. I'm not sure about Adobe Premiere Pro. Overall, it's fantastic. However, if you're using older video editors or platforms that don't support this codec, you might want to use HEVC. There is virtually no scenario that I'd recommend recording in the AVC, which is H.264, your MP4 format. I, I would never recommend using that unless you're just using some weird esoteric beginner's video editor or something that doesn't support. Uh, virtually everything's going to support HEVC these days. AV1 is still hit or miss, but you know, whatever. Either way, AV1 was the default for my graphics card choice here, and whether you use AV1 or HEVC, you will have to go in and add in the video extension codecs in the Microsoft Store. It'll actually pop up and tell you that. The AV1 is free, which is another advantage of using it. The HEVC one at least used to cost like 99 cents or something. I do recommend just go ahead and buying it and then it's licensed for every Windows computer you sign into your Microsoft account with. So just, just, just pay the 99 cents and don't worry about it. Not a big deal if you want to use HEVC. HEVC is another high efficiency video codec, but it's not as good as AV1 these days. So you have those profiles, but you can set custom and then you can choose manually choose your resolution or you can just choose to record whatever your game is running at. Then you can choose between 30 or 60 FPS. I would love to see more frame rate options. 24 FPS if I'm seeing into a 24 FPS camera feed, for instance, or even higher. Like these newer graphics cards can record crazy things, which I have coming in an upcoming video you should get subscribed for. I would love to see 120 FPS as an option, especially for the replay buffer we'll talk about in a moment. I would love to see that. Not currently an option. Now, what is awesome is you have video bitrate options 
from 1 megabit per second all the way up to 100 megabits per second. And that's regardless of what codec you're using and regardless of what resolution you use. So I could record 360p video at 100 megabits per second just because. There's no real advantage to doing this, but I could. I'm gonna set it back up to 4K, which should just be limited by your in-game resolution. There, there was a workaround in NVIDIA Shadow Play where you had to set it to 4K or even 8K to get the higher bitrate allocations. This isn't necessary in real life, which I love. Uh, audio bitrate goes down from 32 kilobits per second to 320. Just crank it up to the max. I would love to see either PCM wave audio support because I'm pretty sure that's you don't need a license for that. So just let us do it. It's supported. Well, actually, it's not supported in the MP4 container. That is the problem. Regardless, I would love to see higher bit rates supported because the AAC codec it uses can support higher bit rates. I would love to see that. You can choose stereo or if you have surround sound set up, you can actually record surround sound. And then if you're recording your microphone track, you have the option to record that to a separate audio file. Unlike NVIDIA Shadowplay, the audio is recorded to a, a literal separate M4A audio file. In Shadowplay, it's just slapped on a second track in the video file, which is much more convenient for editing in most video editors, but some people will have problems, at which point you can use the separate track, and Relive is actually going to work better for you, but you may run into more syncing issues sometimes that way. You don't have the option of just recording it in the file as a separate track, however. Here you also get an audio boost option for your mic. You probably don't need it. Now, when choosing your encoder and your video bitrate, 100 megabits per second is completely overkill at all resolutions for HEVC and AV1, and especially AV1. Now, I'm doing it because I don't care. I have tons of hard drive space. I'm going to record the best quality possible, so when it gets squished down repeatedly through editing, because, you know, your, your video's first compressed when you record it, then it's compressed again when you export your video, when you export your video to upload, and then it's compressed again by YouTube when you upload it. So that's three stages of compression. You want your first stage to be as lossless or as uncompressed as possible. So by the time it makes it to YouTube, it looks fantastic still. Whereas if you record a crappy bitrate, it's going to look even worse by the time it makes it up to YouTube. For a three minute, nine second video, we are looking at 2.3 gigabytes in file size for the 100 megabits per second. You can do the math yourself. Uh, not a huge deal. But for AV1, again, 100 megabits per second is way overkill. For 4K and 1440p, I'd say you could stick to around 25 to 30 megabits per second, probably. For 1080p and lower, I'd do like 15 to 18 megabits per second. And that's still slightly overkill, but again, you want to be higher quality than you need to be so you get the best results at the end. If you're at HEVC, I would bump that up a little bit. So 20-ish megabits per second to 25 for 1080p and lower, and then 30 to 50 for 1440p and 4K, respectively. AVC, just don't record that. Just just don't do it. Live streaming, you again get a bunch of quality profiles, including an adaptive one if you have internet fluctuation issues, which is nice to see. You don't even set a manual bitrate. It just adapts, which is neat. Or you set custom. Again, you get to choose your resolution. You get to choose 30 or 60 FPS. You get to choose your bitrate. For Twitch, you're looking at 6 to 7.5 if you include audio megabits per second, which is awesome. Unfortunately, you cannot send the full 320 kilobits per second in the live streaming, even though Twitch supports it. I hope AMD introduces that. You have the option to archive your stream to a local recording, which you want to do in most cases, so you have a copy. And then they have a new advanced, or enhanced filtering section, rather, which uses some sort of AI machine learning thing that they've trained on it to just make better filtering in the encoding for... <laughs> this sounds so stupid, because there, there's no real technical explanation that I can give you at this point in time. I could get one from AMD at some point, but you're not going to care about the minute details. Basically, it's just a... It's a, a finely trained way to in, to filter the video encoding to make it look better at low bit rates. It's only supported on AVC, which is why you don't see it over here unless you choose AVC, and it's only really useful at lower bit rates, so not really relevant to recording anyway. Now, I have done some testing with this at both 1080p and 720p at 6 megabits per second, and you can look at the side-by-sides now. I'm going to play them in slow-mo, and we can punch in and whatever. When you really pixel peep and you stop and you look frame by frame, I can confidently say that the enhanced filtering does actually look better, but it's, as I mentioned with my last encoding update video, we are splitting hairs, it is minute differences, you're not going to notice if it's off. However, if you are not running your GPU completely maxed out for your game and recording and you're wishing you had additional performance, it's free quality bump might as well turn it on. But it does use more graphics power from the 3D side that your game actually runs on, so if you are running into performance issues, turn it off, your viewers won't care. I really hope we are so close to either higher bitrate 
or AV1 streaming on Twitch this year. I really hope it happens this year. Down here, you can choose where your videos save. You can set up the instant replay buffer, which is awesome. You get to choose a wide variety of arbitrary timings from 15 seconds all the way up to 1200 seconds if you want, uh, which is awesome. I just usually set it to a minute. You can choose whether it buffers to memory or storage, which is pretty cool because OBS replay buffer buffers to memory. And if you're low on memory, you're not going to be able to buffer that much. If you have fast SSDs like most gamers do these days, you can buffer it to your SSD instead. A really cool feature that NVIDIA doesn't have anything close to is the instant GIF feature. Instead of just saving clips, you can create GIFs from your videos, from your gameplay. So if something really, really, really awesome happened, you can set up a hotkey to save a GIF from 5 seconds to 30 seconds in length of whatever just happened. And you can change quality. If you do high quality, you'll probably have file size issues when uploading to Twitter or Discord or what have you. But you can create GIFs from your gameplay, which is just freaking awesome. Like, I... What a cool feature. Between this and some of the other features, like Shadowplay is lagging really far behind. You can also set up an in-game replay, which is actually going to take your instant replay you saved and play it back over top of your screen for your live stream. So if something really, really awesome happened in-game while you're streaming and you want your viewers to be able to see it, you have a very quick option to just save the replay and call it back up for your viewers to see it either you know, you, you get a little bit of customization over the size and dimensions here, and you also get to choose where it goes on your screen. This is really cool. Doing this in OBS is actually really difficult. So the fact that they have it built in is freaking awesome. I have my complaints. I would like to see better frame rate supports, better audio bit rate support on streaming, whatever. But this rules, honestly. Like it, ah, I love it. And of course, for doing any of this, you would need to go to the hotkeys section here in this advanced setting. And then you can set up hotkeys for toggling recording, turning on and off your camera, selecting a specific region on or off. You got your push to talk hotkeys. And then you can set up, once you've set up your scenes, you can set up your scene switching hotkeys here as well. I would love to see AMD or the broader community. I think AMD would have to implement. Oh, you got hotkeys that you could use to rotate your display. I don't know if any of you all did this back in my school days, like high school. We would always use the control alt left, control alt down hotkeys. They were enabled on like all the school computers by default to turn people's screens upside down and it would make them so mad that they didn't know how to fix it. It was a, a hilarious harmless prank. It's cool that that's still built in somewhere. Anyway, I would love to see AMD open up an API of some sort to allow the community or Elgato or AMD themselves to develop a Stream Deck plugin for the Elgato Stream Deck or Touch Portal or whatever solution, all of them ideally. Uh, for switching scenes and recording and stuff without having to rely on hotkeys because system hotkeys can sometimes be finicky. Th this is where you would set all this. Don't forget to do that. While you're deciding which graphics card you want to get and optimizing your stream, I'm going to go ahead and give you a free upgrade to your stream. And that is Backing Track, our stream safe, video safe, royalty free music service that doesn't just provide lo fi beats and the generic crap everyone else has. We have metal, we have rock, we've got grunge, we've got uh, the, the, the Slayer Wars track coming up, sounds like straight out of Doom Eternal. We've also got Synth Rock, which was so popular that we ended up doing two albums and a little baby album with because you all loved it so much. We have a Halo themed album when it's Christmas time again, we have a Christmas album. It's a, it, it's, it's a music service that my, myself and my community manager, Will, wanted to provide to you all so that you could have high quality, real music for your streams and videos and not rely on what everyone else has. So that's backingtrack.gg. You can stream it for free and we have free downloads in our Discord. All of those links are in the description below. Shout out to AMD for sending on over the 7900 XT for me to cover and review more in depth. I've been starved for AMD graphics cards the past few years, and AMD is really coming back. They have a video team that is kicking butt, taking names, and trying to get caught up. The David and Goliath battle is back. AMD is competitive again, and I cannot wait to continue covering this and showing you because there's a lot of cool stuff. This is the tip of the iceberg. Like I said before in previous videos, I had some delays at the start of the year. A lot of cool coverage coming, and you need to check out this video right here talking about NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series encoding capabilities because I have a video coming next that will talk about AMD's 
encoding capabilities and how it stacks up with this latest generation. And you, you, you want to be informed so you can see the head-to-head -head because it's going to get wild. Remember to be kind, rewind.